Hi, Replay viewers. Thank you for tuning in. I am Marisha. I am a school-based speech-language pathologist, and I also blog at roadtospeech.com, um, and I talk about all things organization um, and also some random therapy ideas and things. <laughs> so today I'll be talking about... Oh, welcome everyone. Thank you guys for the hearts. Hi, Tina. Um, you guys came in kind of quick. I didn't catch all your names. Um, but if you're here for the first time, um, let me know. Hi. Um, let me know your name and uh, where you're working or what setting you work in. I'd love to get to know you guys. Okay, so I will turn this around. Okay. Hi, everyone. I hope you're having a good Monday. Oh, we all need some organization, huh? This time of year is like crazy um but we're getting there oh hi linda i've seen you before um <laughs> so yes um ooh, high school fun um anessa did i say her? oh yeah nessa uh katie hi katie so um today we'll be talking about how to <laughs> right i think i can i think i can <laughs> um so, Candace, welcome. Wow, K through 12, that's a big range. You must be in a smaller district, I assume. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so I am going to be talking about how I kind of organize my parent communication and like parent input and teacher input for IEPs and evaluations and all that good stuff. Um, and, oh, my iPad is still on, so you'll hear some beeps. Uh, oh, that is so cool. You'll have to tell me about that sometime if you ever feel like chatting. Um, so, so talking about parent communication and er, parent input and teacher input and getting that all organized and put into paperwork like the IEP or the evaluation. Um, I know other people call it somewhere else. And so, and I'm like a little bit scattered brain today, so bear with me, guys. <laughs> so I have five tips for you to kind of organize all those pieces. Um, I talked about them a little bit last week, but um, it was kind of shuffled in with to-dos and it felt a little bit hectic. So um, so here we go. We'll have a, a more thorough talk about this. So the first thing that I that I do is I kind of make a plan or I have a system and this kind of is a theme, huh? Having systems for things. So at the beginning of every year, I kind of reevaluate and decide how I'm going to tackle the pieces, especially the ones that were more difficult. And so this is one that I have had a hard time with and I still have a little bit of a hard time getting those pieces in, but um, I came up with a system that helped me get this done um, and do it a little bit more effectively. Um, so whatever you, because um, I'm gonna give you four pieces of my system, but as you know, kind of mix it up and do what you what works best for you. And then, so have that system and make a plan and use it consistently because that's what'll help you not forget the important pieces. And then, so this the first, so it's kind of like a one-two. So the second thing, or the second tip that I have is to schedule those contacts in your calendar. So when you're going through your IEP evaluation schedule, um, what I do when I'm doing that is I sit down and put dates into my calendar. And I, because if I call the parents like a month ahead of time, I have found that that's kind of too early and we end up having to like touch base again. And then it just, make scheduling a lot harder because who knows what they're doing a month from today um, and all of that. So I found that like a couple weeks is kind of like that zone of proximal scheduling to be super silly. Um, but so you have that like zone of time that where it's where you get like the most bang for your buck. So I do that and I contact the parents and um, especially for evaluations I might have them like if I'm if I have a little bit more time, I sometimes have them come in and then we sit and talk and um, that's more for like during the referral piece um, for reevaluations, it kind of varies. But um, 
So I schedule that communication and make sure that I remember to contact the parents and give myself enough time to get all those pieces done. And then, um, and calling early is so helpful, but not too early. And then the third thing that I do is I use, like if I'm talking to a parent on the phone, I use these, um, I use Avery labels and I take, so I made a little template and this was inspired by Rachel from Queen's Speech. She has an awesome blog post on using labels for data. Um, and I, I can't remember if she came up with the parent communication piece, but the idea was inspired by her. And then, um, so I take, when I'm talking on the phone, I just, because I have those labels right next to my desk, I just pull them out and I write the student's name, who I talk to, and write that information down. And I also use that for other therapists and teachers if there's just random things along the way. Um, the labels are two by four, so there are eight on a page, right? That makes sense, yeah. Um, so yeah, Rachel's awesome. <laughs> She's got lots of good ideas. So that was inspired by her. And then, um, yeah, so then I transferred the labels to, I made like a little template. And so, cause the labels have eight on a page and then I made my own template that has like the student's name, just like a spot for that information. Um, and I put it in their working file and then I have room for like seven other labels. And then whenever I have some time, um, I just like transfer them over into the working files so the labels stay with the student. But during the year, it's just easier to have one place to keep all that information. Um, so that's how I like, ha that's my system for keeping that communication and it saves me a lot of time. Um, Cause I, who likes shuffling through files and like trying to grab the file um, when you're, when you get a phone call or whatever. So that's helped a lot. And then the, so I did three already. So step four is using some, using forms. So I use this with my teachers for every kid that I'm doing. Um, yeah, <laughs> the logbook can get messy really easily. Um, and this way the information stays in the student's file instead of having like different um, I guess you could have a folder with a sheet for each student, um, but I just like how this works. It saved me some time. And then, so the fourth thing is having some forms or having some templates for, so I have a form that um, sometimes I'll, a lot of the time I'll go through it with the teacher and we'll just have a quick meeting and touch on all the points of like how the student's doing in class, how they're doing with their accommodations, um, how they're doing academically, and kind of getting the full picture so I don't forget any of those pieces. And I can, it'll help me, because that transfers directly into the present levels and um, that makes it really easy to get a good report kind of pre-written. And then um, I have some that I use for parent input, mostly with evaluations and things, and I'm toying with the idea of using that for parent input um, just for any kind of paperwork, but I don't know. I feel like I usually get a pretty good picture just from talking to them, so I don't know if I need that, but that's something that might be helpful. Um, and then, so that was four. And then number five, because I don't know about you guys, but I always am, like I, last year especially, I was scrambling to get the parent input in, um, and sometimes teachers are so busy, it's hard to get a hold of them. So to keep myself accountable, I have, um, and I've talked about this a lot of times, but I swear they're making my job so much easier. I have the, like I have pre-made checklists for everything I need to do in the IEP or the evaluation. And um, so that's helped me a lot to kind of have that going. But if you are not a headless chicken like I am. And if you can keep track of most of the things, if there's just like, if you just wanna give yourself a couple reminders of like, oh, for this student, I really need to talk to the OT or I really need to do X, Y, and Z. You could just put a sticky note on the working file and write those things that you really wanna get done and then just check them off as you go and then trash that sticky note when you get it, <laughs> when you get it all done, cause that's really fun. Um, Post-it notes are fun. <laughs> um, 
um, I had to cut down because it was getting a little bit counterproductive. But um, yeah, I grid and check everything off. Um, so those are the five things that I do. So first thing, quick recap, is I make that system so I know what I'm doing every time. And even on those super crazy headless chicken days, I can at least get that stuff done and not forget some of the key pieces. And then to get for my system, the things that I do is I have, I schedule when I'm going to communicate the parent with the parents. And I also have, so when I'm scheduling out like a month at a time, because I look at all the paperwork that's due like about once a month and I send out the forms to the teachers or I go deliver them and have a mini meeting just to get that piece done. Um, and then it's easier to schedule if I already know about a teacher's availability, so mini tangent. And then, so scheduling those appointments and when you're gonna contact a parent and then using labels to keep track of the communication so you can just transfer over to a data sheet and then, um, and I'll answer the how often do I communicate in just a second, just so I don't get totally off track, but remind me if I don't remember. Um, and then I use forms, like templates, to get all of the information that I really need for the present levels from the teacher and other therapists and all of that, um, like outside therapists and things. And then five is using some kind of checklist or sticky notes to keep track of all of those pieces so that you don't forget if you need help with that. So those are the five things that I have for you today. And then in terms of frequency of parent communication, that's a really good question. I, um, I, it kind of varies depending on the time of the year. I try to, I have at least like, hmm, well, I talk to parents at all of the parent conferences unless they don't show up and then I talk before the IEP meeting and during the meeting or any other meetings we have to have throughout the year. Um, and I do a lot of, I wrote a blog post about this, but I do a lot of communication, um, not like th through like homework and stickers and things that I send home with the kiddos um, because I don't, I wish I could talk to parents like one-on-one -on, -one on the phone more often, but it just um, doesn't work out quite as well. Like at the beginning of the school year, I always do a great job and then um, it gets a little difficult. So the oldest that I work with is sixth grade. And I've heard, because I haven't worked in middle school or high school yet, but I've heard that parent communication is a whole different ball game um, with those older kids. Um, but yeah, that's all that I have. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> um, I would really like to work in... Um, I, well, I did do some ESY summer school with the high school kiddos, but um, that was more short term, but that was a lot of fun. I think I want to do that someday, but I'm happy where I am now. Um, they're so awesome. It's really neat. Um, but yeah, that's all that I have for you guys today. I hope you have a great Monday. Um, I don't have a blog post up for this yet. Um, and then, oh, I can't remember your name, the one that asked about um, speech teach, what was, I'm trying to remember, was it Candace? Candace, maybe? Um, oh, awesome, I got it. <laughs> um, so I have a blog post on my website, roadtospeech.com, about, um, the parent communication tips and kind of about how I manage getting that all done. Uh, with a busy schedule. So if you want to head to roadtospeech.com or if you just want to email me, um, I'm happy to share that with you. But I hope you guys have a great Monday. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I love getting to see you guys on Monday nights and I will